Hello. Hey, how are you? Pretty good, and you? Doing well, doing well, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, no problem. Thanks for yeah. asking. My pleasure, yeah. So um, I'll do a little, just a quick intro and then we can kind of kind of get into it. Okay. So uh, for those of you seeing this interview, uh, welcome Mr. Kurt Farquhar seven time BMI winner and has done many, many scores and, um, you know, theme songs for television shows, movies, uh, as you can see in the background, King of Queens, sister, sister, Moesha, uh, you know, more recently black lightning being Mary Jane, uh, just some amazing accomplishments. And, uh, we are so, so glad to have you here, Mr. Kurt. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So, Part of our part of our intention with our platform is is helping to inspire musicians who who may have never even gotten on stage before, may have never even, you know, started anything that they might think might be remotely professional, mm -hmm. uh, but that they're just starting out playing an instrument or they're just starting out, but they have the passion, the drive and they're they have um, the desire to to be a professional musician mm -hmm. and so i love to start with you back at the beginning of you know when you started playing music and 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 how that happened in your life well i've uh thank you for having me on thanks for the questions um i've been hearing music in my head since i was like three years old i remember uh being out uh, in front of our uh, 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 home and uh, just hearing sounds in my head, hearing melodies. And I remember as I got older and older, it just, it never stopped. It just would constantly, constantly be there. Um, I remember an old, uh, <clears throat> an old, uh, 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 Star Trek episode where they put the melody inside these uh, people's head to drive them crazy. I said, "That's me. I found I it. That's what I have." You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and true story. But I, uh, it's it's just constantly always been there. There's melodies going on in my head right now. You know, mm -hmm. music. I learned to to kind of tamp it down over the years, or or redirect it to where I want it to go. Uh, <clears throat> But it's constantly there, and uh, I started playing instruments. Uh, my mom, uh, I remember, shoot, when I was uh, four or five years old, used to trot us out. You know, it, all, each one of my brothers and my sister would play some sort of instrument that my mother would choose, and I still can't play the instrument that she chose for me. <laughs> <laughs> I played twenty instruments, but I can't play that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, what was it? <laughs> uh, guitar. Uh, yeah. Guitar. My I, something something uh, wrong with me with, with with regards to guitar. I uh, uh, a lot of guitarists say that I write amazing guitar parts, the type of things that they would like to uh, uh, come up with if they have uh, plenty of time to spend on it. Uh, uh, but I can't do it myself. It makes absolute that instrument makes absolutely no sense to me. So <laughs> I get it. I totally yeah. so did. What was the first instrument you started on? Uh, drums. <clears throat> Wow. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, uh, you know, I just had a, a natural, uh, uh, feel for it. And, uh, my, one of my older brothers, uh, uh, Bryant was a drummer for several years. Uh, and, uh, and I was always told never to touch the drums. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, sister's, my sister's boyfriend had a drum set in our basement and, uh, and I was taken down there. I was shown the drums. I said, if you ever touch these drums. <laughs> That's that. it. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, I did it on a, a bet. We used to play on the drums on our desks at school. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I could, uh, myself and a, a friend of mine named Leonard Bailey, were like the best ones. We could play every James Brown beat on our and then, yes. And and one day Leonard Bailey beat me. 
you know, everybody has decided that he was better than me that day. I said, no, he's not. No, he's not. I bet you I could play better than you if we got on a real drum. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, 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 and there was some, where are we going to get drums? I said, I know where some drums are. <laughs> and we, we snuck down in the basement during the, uh, uh, appropriately for this interview, during the Christmas holidays. Uh, uh-huh. Everybody was upstairs and we thought in this little tiny uh, 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 1,200 square foot house, probably, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that nobody would notice or hear us down in the basement playing <laughs> a drum set. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I became a drummer because evidently my critical thinking was not very good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to do very much of anything else. Uh, oh, that's amazing. And uh, I went down and for some reason, everything that I could play on the, on, on the desktop, I could play on the drums, you know, using my feet and hands. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, my uh, uh, sister's boyfriend ran down there and, and I just about made it out the door and he grabbed me and pulled me in. Instead of beating me up, he told me, sat me down at the drums and said, do that again. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, and I did. And then he said, well, take your other hand and do this. And then take your hand and do that. And then roll around. And and everything that he told me to do, I could immediately do. I, mm. was, I was, the first day I ever sat on a drum set was better than my brother who uh, had been playing for three years. So uh, 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 Melvin, who was my uh, uh, sister's boyfriend, grabbed the sticks from him and said, says, uh, and says, okay, you're the drummer. And he, gets, and he says, you play bass. <laughs> wow. And that, that's how it started. So anyway. That- Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if I've ever told that one, but. (laughs) Well, I'm glad that's, you know, those, those are the kinds of, you know, things I think people need to hear, you know, it's just, you you just never know how it starts. And uh, you might, you might be starting on an instrument that somebody told you not to play. (laughs) You know, I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful story. You don't know how it starts and you, and, and, and you darn sure don't know how it's going to end up. I mean, I never would have considered that I would, uh, become uh, a writer for television. I, you know, most of my childhood, I didn't even write, watch TV. So I couldn't, I the, mm-hmm. the idea that I would be writing for it someday had absolutely never bounced through my head for a second. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I would love, let's see here. I want to, I, I want to kind of go through this story a little bit as, as, we take this journey with you from just starting to play drums to, you know, now do you join a band? Do you start taking drum lessons? Kind of where do you uh, go from there? Kind of D, all of the above. Uh, uh, I started taking lessons again because uh, another uh, drummer that I knew could do something that I couldn't. And, and so I wanted to be able to do it. Mm. I said, how, how are you able to do that with your hands? He says, well, I, I take lessons and he, uh, uh, he told me where, and I started uh, going down and taking lessons and and studying about music. I wanted to do everything faster, quicker. I wanted to be, mm. I wanted to move further ahead and uh, and uh, as fast as I could. And and after I started taking lessons, I noticed when I would practice, I would get better. And you know, you'd practice and practice some things for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden, you look three months later, you're the, significantly further along than you were before. And I started thinking, boy, what if I practice more? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which was generally just got me up to, I was practicing about an hour and a half a day and my, and my oldest brother, who I was very influenced by, came and visited us uh, <clears throat> and uh, said, uh, and when he went away, he uh, uh, called back and said, hey, how's everything going? How's, how's your little hobby? And I said, don't know what he's talking about, but okay. <laughs> he, said, he says, you know, the music thing, the drums. Mm. I said, oh, you mean my career? And, <laughs> yes. And he said, oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't want to insult you. I, I just assumed it was a hobby since you spent four hours a day uh, uh, watching TV and doing other things. Uh, uh, 
and, uh, and only about an hour or so in front of your career. So um, uh, mm. I immediately changed that around. That's when I stopped watching uh, television. I literally would not come to a television unless my dad would tell me that, hey, there's guys with musical instruments on the TV. So I would mm. come and watch whether it was a marching band, uh, whether it was back when I was in high school and, and Midnight Special would come on or, or, mm-hmm. or set. True story, Saturday Night Live, I didn't know anything about J- John Belushi and all of the people that were on the show. Mm-hmm. I only knew that they had musical performances and my dad would come and tell me, hey, they're, they're on with, uh, playing music right now. And I would come up and watch the music and go back away. And <laughs> you know, Wow. And, and wow. It, it was really that dramatic of a, of a change for me. You know, it is mm-hmm. the <clears throat> interesting thing about music is that it's about, it really, really is about the, Yes, there's a talent uh, thing that's involved that we, we're lucky enough to be born with some sort of natural talent for music, but it really, really is about the hours that you're going to spend working at it. Mm. It's, it's a soul and solitary sort of endeavor uh, to sit there and practice for hours a day hour on this instrument or that instrument. And uh, uh, uh you have to be, uh, you you have to be drawn to that. You have to be drawn to the to the work on the craft. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. uh, it's it's not so much so drawn to stardom or or a success in however you perceive that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's drawn to this craft and the working at that craft. You know, if it's a wind instrument, just the the sense of how air comes through your body and goes out your mouth and into this instrument or making a sound with your vocal cords or, or drummers with just the whole movement of, you know, uh, how they uh, make a sound out of a drum. It's, <clears throat> you have to be fascinated with that because it's, mm-hmm. it takes hours and hours. I got up to uh, eventually practicing eight hours a day and 16 on the weekend. So <laughs> uh, uh, it's a uh, 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 natural talent is is really really great. Mm-hmm. But what are you going to do when you run into somebody like me, who's mm-hmm. naturally naturally talented and willing to practice that much? That's you hear the same story whether it's uh, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or 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 whoever. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, whatever athlete, the musician, they had to have worked, worked, worked. Yes, they were naturally talented. Yes, they were gifted with this, that, and the other. But boy, work, work, yeah. or work, and and loving the work. Mm. <laughs> loving the process yes. to do it, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I think like you said before, I think part of loving the work is, is noticing the improvement, you know, as you go along is yes. you get these little these little tidbits of improvement that you see along the way and it continues yeah. to give you that motivation. Yeah. It makes you, you want know. to jump uh, say, I wonder, wonder what I could do if I could double up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, can I do that? Can I take three months to turn that into a month and a half? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Very inspiring. So, so when did you start playing more instruments uh, besides the drums? Uh, uh, pretty early on. I just, uh, I remember a, uh, uh, waking up one day and telling my mom that uh, I believe that I could, I could uh, just play uh, uh, the saxophone if I had one, you know. And I wanted to play the soprano sax, which is notoriously difficult to play and keep in tune and all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I wanted this really, really expensive uh, saxophone, at least expensive for us. And I thought, you know, my my mom said, said oh I, I just told her about my dream and he and she says oh that's nice go tell your dad which was generally code for you're not getting to <laughs> <laughs> and and of course he wasn't going to get it for me and i uh and uh i said well i don't need you i'll go get a job I'll get my own i'll get my own money i'll get my saxophone and i uh 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 i i started uh shining shoes down at a mm. at a at a barber shop, and uh, uh, I became known as the uh, the dancing singing shoe shine boy. And I would <sighs> I would shine their uh, shoes, and I would snap the rags and stuff to the rhythm 
of uh, whatever was playing on the jukebox at the time, you know, and they just love it. And I dance around and they give me big tips. And uh, so I, I had all my money stuffed. I'd walk home, I'd stuff it in a jar. If they gave me money for uh, my, my money for uh, uh, a, a school lunch, uh, before I went out to school, I would just dump that money in a jar and, and keep it stepping. <laughs> and uh, uh, every everything, every penny that I had, everything that I could get, I would until I could uh, uh, try to save up for this instrument. And uh, I'll never forget uh, my dad and saying that I was getting skinny, really skinny. And <laughs> and I and and he said, "Why aren't you eating at school?" I said, "I said no." I've been saving the money so I can get my saxophone, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna get it too. He said, "He, he said, what money? What, what? How are you gonna get a saxophone?" And and I showed him this jar full of ones and ones and fives and quarters, <laughs> and <laughs> and it was packed. And and he just laughed. He was smiled, and he's and I'll never forget this. He told my my mom, uh, 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 whose name Lucille. He said. Lucille, go down there and get this boy a saxophone before he starves to death. <laughs> and, uh, and he did. And uh, within a couple months, I was just, I was playing, I was playing with other professional musicians. I could, I could just see the instrument. And I, mm. that became the thing. I would see an instrument. I would envision how to play it. And I would kind of be able to do it. And, uh, and I'd start taking lessons and, you know, and move on in that way. <clears throat> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, so uh, you went through high school taking music lessons, I'm sure, for probably various instruments. Yeah, I went to a high school where you could major in music. Uh, it was called oh, CBS. Cool. And uh, they had a full music program with a, with a uh, over 200-piece marching band, uh, 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 Multiple orchestras, one of them a, a hundred piece orchestra, had a full choir program with multiple choirs in it. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wrote my first symphony when I was 12 years old. And when I was in high school, I had an orchestra at my beck and call. I was doing arrangements from everything from R&B songs to I was I I just saw something recently that I had um, <clears throat> I mean I just listened to a song uh, recently that I remembered uh, doing an arrangement of uh, 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 Chuck Mangione's Legend of the One-Eyed Sailor. Mm. Uh, uh, I was a freshman in high school when I did that, you know, and <laughs> and the the idea that uh, I had that ability and I could see some of the things that I did arrangements on or road or whatever mm -hmm. uh, was very, very exciting. That's beautiful. So, so then musicians came from that era. a lot of great musicians mm -hmm. came out of that program. Daryl Jones from uh, the bassist from the Rolling Stones uh, wow. was in the same high school. Uh, Angus Thomas uh, played with Miles Davis was in the same uh, uh, school. Keith Henderson and, and uh, wow. uh, one of the one great uh, band leaders and stuff. I think he was, uh, band leader with uh oh goodness i'm blanking out right now that's all right that's but uh anyway just a, a ton of uh, amazing musicians donzel davis and uh, just a ton of others came out of the mm. same program and where we were able to major in music we took all the other classes that everybody else did but we had a a, a full uh a, at least half of our day was was in music programs so music that's theory, incredible music theory music history music uh uh uh, uh, your your uh, personal instrument, music uh, 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 repair of instruments. Wow, which is uh, interesting. The the woman of uh, uh, Miss Jocelyn Sweeney, who uh, uh, started this program, realized that they had a, a their uh, you know this is the inner city school in the seventies, and and not a lot of kids uh, from the inner city had a. a money for instruments and whatnot, let alone violins and, and, and mm. upright basses, uh, contrabass and all that. Sure. Uh, she found out there was a little known rule in Chicago that uh, dating from back when most schools had, had music programs. And you 
if you didn't, if I think it went that if you if you had musical instruments but you weren't using them, okay, mm. you no longer had a program, any one of the other schools could come and appropriate your instruments. Wow. Yeah. So she went around the city taking these instruments from uh, uh, schools that no longer had uh, uh, operational music programs. Wow. And, and a lot of them in, in not the best condition. Wow. And so she hired a guy that was a mu in musical instrument repairman and had him repairing the instruments. But to get extra help, she made us all take musical <laughs> repair classes. And our <laughs> thing was to learn how to glue back together a violin, a, putting the new nut on it and, the, uh, you know, wow. getting inside of horns, the whole nine yards. And so they were able to get instruments for virtually everybody uh, 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 because of uh, the sort of appropriation program that she did. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, awesome. and we all learned how to, how to, how do to fix it. Keep, up, keep up an instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So at this time, when you're going through this high school program, what, where was your mind in, in uh, thinking about your career? How did you see your career at that time for, for what you thought you might be doing when you, you know, got out of school? I, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to have a career in jazz and what <laughs> I was playing rock and roll a lot. Uh, I want. I wanted to have a career in jazz. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to uh, uh, eventually play for the Chicago Symphony, and mm. uh, and I wanted to write music. But I never considered myself a composer. I mean, I was three or four years into uh, uh, composing for television before I could. Before I would actually, and I still felt uncomfortable about saying I was a composer. So wow, that, wow. That part, that part was never, I just, it felt like something that was elite and something that was beyond me. And people like me don't become composers. That's what mm. it, uh, I thought, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I felt like I could, I, I played really good and I thought that I could be, become a symphony player. I uh, thought that I would, uh, you know, I thought that I, uh, I knew that I could become a, a significant jazz player. I knew that I was really good. It wasn't, uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't guessing at it by the time I was in high school. Sure, sure. I, I was recruited into this high school, and when I showed up there, I I knew that I knew what I was. I was pretty cons uh, confident about what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. And then you went through a few different college programs, isn't that right? You went to Berkeley. Yeah, and... that's. I, just, I went to some program at Berkeley. I was not, <laughs> you know, and that was and that was cool. I have, but one mm -hmm. of the best things about that is I met uh, uh, and became friends with a number of. Uh, uh, brilliant uh, French musicians, uh, one of which Philippe Says, uh, uh, who's just a great uh, musician, composer, and, uh, uh, arranger, and uh, and uh, and Alain Jolie, and who's mm. a guitarist, and um, and Robert Fienga, who eventually ended up running the music department at um, at Disney at Euro Disney. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> He, uh, the, 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 Alain and, uh, especially Alain and Philippe and Robert, uh, uh I was telling him I was going to go to the, uh, to Juilliard. That's what I wanted to do. And they were saying, well, why would you do that? It's kind of based on the Paris and Versailles conservatories and mm. it's free if you can get in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, I ended up going there. I, I spent a year in, uh, uh, in France, uh, uh, studying, mm -hmm. I loved it. I had a great time. I came back to uh, I left there uh, uh, to come back to study at at Eastern Illinois University with a uh, 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 very well respected a uh, uh, percussion teacher by the name of Johnny Lang. Uh, uh, spent several years there and uh, decided that. Uh, especially when I decided I, I no longer wanted to be a symphony player, that um, I thought that it was more of what I needed to learn was more important to get from uh, going professional. Mm. So I moved out here. Wow. And uh, got a few jobs and thought everything would be just fine. And then I was starving and uh, <laughs> had jobs and 
<laughs> working at the convenient mart mm -hmm. and uh then got some more jobs and uh and then ended up on the on the street homeless and uh uh after that uh i ended up getting my first uh i ended up getting a record deal and ended up getting uh my first uh television uh work and <laughs> and it uh it all seemed to work out in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, in in that, I got a couple of questions. What what were some of your first jobs when you moved out? Uh, when you when you when you came out to LA, what were what were some of the first jobs that you started with? Oh, uh, I, uh, I I was pretty lucky when I first got out here. Uh, I. Uh, I actually always wanted to be in New York. And then I, I uh, was auditioning for all kinds of, of, of shows. My friend, uh, uh, Bubba Bryant, uh, who's an amazing drummer, uh, he and I moved out together. And <clears throat> we used to look on the back of records. And back in those days, it would tell you where those records were recorded. And if any of them were recorded out here, we would call the union. And oddly enough, the union would just give you their telephone number. And we would just call up people and say, Hey, I'm Kurt Farquhar. I'm great. You know, you got to hear me and you know, give me a job. And some of it would end up in wait. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, and some of it would end up uh, with people talking to you for a long time and telling you how things kind of worked out here. And uh, uh, I ended up getting a, a job uh, doing a musical in New York uh, called a Broadway musical. Mm. And it was uh, starting off Broadway. <laughs> And uh, it was being directed by George Faison, who had just won uh, uh, a Tony Award for for uh, uh, choreographing The Wiz. And so it was a number of really Don Pippen, I believe, was the musical director, who mm -hmm. uh, who told me one of my, one of my favorite things as a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't putting all of the right hits and buttons at the end of of, of, of cues to. George just wanted me to play, 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 you know, because he wanted he wanted to be inspired by this new drummer, you know. Mm -hmm. But he uh, Don Pippen needed specific types of endings and things, and and uh, and I never forget him uh, him talking to me about putting a button on something. He said, "Hurt, you know something? You you know why you know why they they have buttons on on the ends of uh, uh, of songs like this?" I said, "No, no, why?" Because they work. Now put the button on it. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Gotcha. I'm good with that. Got it. I'll got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll knock that out for you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yep. The lessons that's, that you go up. That's right. That's right. And after after that, I ended up. Uh, I I decided that it was uh, 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 I wanted to be on top of the stage instead of under the stage. So mm. I uh, I had been uh, requested to play with uh, 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 Freddie Hubbard for uh, wow. several times, and <laughs> and finally I decided I uh, I would go that route, and I did, and toured with him for a while and it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, I thought that was one of the more uh, creative and uh, <laughs> educational moments of my life. I mean, I, 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 we would come through my head every day that uh, six months ago, I was, I was in school and now I'm on stage with Freddie Hubbard. I literally couldn't bow yeah. That's yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, uh, I know we're kind of coming up on our time here, um, but I'm, I'm enjoying this interview. I wonder if you would be available sometime for a, for a episode two, cause this is just, uh, yeah, really good two. stuff. Part oh. two. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Love it. Okay. Great. Great. Um, well, I can, I can send out that email a little later. Uh, maybe one more question before we go. Sure. Um, you know, um, I heard you say you, you, you got these first few jobs 
you wound up homeless and then you know you you started getting into film and tv and so maybe this will be kind of you know getting into our next next episode but you know the idea of that you know um just that you can go from working you can go from having you know a, a certain amount of success to that not working out and now you don't know what to do and then now you have a record deal you know next thing you know and so <laughs> that was all um, my that was all my fault and the irrational thinking and i you know this is a serious thought that went through my mind <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I can laugh at it now but i thought that the reasons I got these jobs that I had gotten at that up to that point was because I was really good. Mm. And so since, and since, and since I had no plans of being any less good, mm. I will always work period. I've already made it in people like me. I'm damn good in the conversation. It's just onward and upward from here. Mm-hmm. Well, then real life, grabs you by the collars and, <laughs> and says, it, well, it, n- not so much so. Mm. It doesn't necessarily work that way. <clears throat> There's a gentleman when I first moved out here that uh, uh, he was a, a musical director and he said, I would rather have, uh, I would rather have the musician that, that answered his phone calls and showed up on time than the guy that played better. And I did not understand that until I started having to hire people myself. And there's so much that goes along with it. Uh, <clears throat> yes, how well you you play, but you will start finding that people expect you to already be able to play before you get the job. Uh, it's how are you with people? How is it, you know, <clears throat> who are you to to be locked in a room with all day. I work in a, I work 16 hours a day in a dark windowless room with an old Dutchman, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I assure you, it matters who, who comes into that room with, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, who you are, the things that you can change, the things that, uh, the things that you can bring to something that are just beyond just your, your musical abilities, you know, uh, who you are as a human makes a difference because guess what? you're working for other humans who have mm. other things that the, the, there's other elements of their lives. And, it, and there, there's a lot of work and a lot of effort that they're having to put forward to do all of this. And, and your attitude isn't one of the things that they're more, in, uh, more inclined to have to put up with if it's bad. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, just, who you are makes a difference. And if you do not think so, then you will end up at that convenient mark. You will end up on that street. You will end up things not working out for you and you having no idea because what you are oblivious to what is real. What is real is we are all humans that have to get, have to connect together. And with, and if you're doing something like film, television, where it's all interconnected with all these different disciplines, Everyone thinking theirs is very important. Heck, that that writer or that director may have had the idea for that film four years ago, five years old, ten or fifteen years ago, and then they go then they go through all of these years of development of trying to get this project to uh, uh, to screen. Uh, you know that as if he's a writer, he's sitting there, he's writing all day and doing all of this, all the things that he has to do. And and then he gets that lovely pimp slap of the moment where he gets to go out and sell this uh, uh, this mm. lovely uh, piece of work that he's done. Mm. And then if he's lucky, that gets picked up. And after that, all of these people are coming after you. After it gets picked up, oh, now he has to deal with or, uh, he, uh, this guy who's probably been sitting in his room by himself with the same jeans on for the last six months mm. is now having to be uh, 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 sitting with a wardrobe person in front of him. Well, should she wear this dress? And if she does, it should be have this belt and this sash. Or do you think the sash is too much? And he's like, and he's looking, he's looking very much like me right now. <laughs> All of these things are having to be dealt with. What other writers he's going to come up with? What uh, who's going to be the cast? Blah blah blah. You know, and if it's a TV show, if it's a mm. if it's a, 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 a network television show, the the upside of this succeeding 
is astronomical. Mm. It's beyond what most people have ever thought in their lives, okay? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so to say that those people are nervous, to say that they are stressed beyond all imagination mm. is putting it lightly. Wow. So if all you're thinking about is you and your music and say, okay, everybody, okay, it's all right. It's all right. I'm here now. I've got the music and everything is going to be all right. Well, uh, duh, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, this man has been on a 10 year journey and you're coming in at the end, pretty much the end of the process, thinking you're going to fix everything. I think, how can I come and make his life just a little bit easier? Mm. How can yeah. I? How can I communicate better with him about something that most people, even musicians have difficulty communicating about music amongst themselves, let alone you're gonna communicate with music about music to somebody who's probably never touched a musical instrument. Mm. So what are you gonna to do to make that process easier? That is gonna keep you a job much, much quicker then your great music and I and 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 I say great music is important. I I love it. I, my, I, 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 but to be honest with you, you are probably going to be the only one that cares. You know, mm. you know, <laughs> they they need usable music and they need and they need somebody who isn't crazy to mm. be able to help the process. To help the process, it's a long and hard process that I am just a cog in the wheel. Mm. One person doing one job, and there's and last time I looked on every single TV show that I had, if it's a half hour sitcom, there's over 250 other names on that on the <laughs> list that runs at the end. That's right. You know, now come That's on. Awesome. You yeah. know, so what? Are, who are you going to be? What sort of humanity are you going to bring to the table, along with your artistry? Mm. It's assumed that you're going to bring your artistry, but. We never know what sort of mixed bag of crazy we're going to get. With. <laughs> That's so, right. So what sort of humanity are you going to bring to the table? I assure you and promise you, if you think about that, one one hundredth of the time that you've spent on, on, on your music, you will come up with the right answer. You will do the right thing. And your career will be a much more satisfying one for you <clears throat> because people will want to be around you and they will want to work with you and they will find they will find joy in working with you they will find comfort in work with you and they will find great music working with you but that's Beautiful. my idea well said <laughs> no well i mean that's fantastic i know we've uh <laughs> we've definitely gone over time and this has been an awesome interview Mr. Kurt, I'm I'm really really thankful for for your graciousness and uh, and your time. It's just it's it's beautiful to hear your story, and um, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the follow up. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. you doing? Thanks for having me on. <laughs>